So in this video, I'm just going to go through backup and restore uh, with the uh, Wago controller. Um, so firstly, I've com connected to the controller via Ethernet cable. Um, just want to double check the IP address is correct. So I'll just go communication, Ethernet, just search for the device. And there it is, so 192.168.1.50. Apply, apply. So now, just double check my communication parameters, and yep, I've got it to 1.50. And now, before I log in, um, go to the resources tab, open up target settings. Now, with target settings, you can, if you change controller, for instance, you can actually just change the code here in target settings. Um, but what I want to do is I want to go to the general tab and click load boot project automatically. So what that does is if the controller loses power, it will have the boot project on there. So when it regains power, the program will still be on the controller. So you click this option once you're um, comfortable that the program is correct and this is the program that you want to stay on the controller. Click this option and just click OK. So now when we log in, it will create a boot project. And just say yes to download new program. And then go online run. And we'll see the values come through now. We go to our program, we've got our values there. So that's how you create a, a boot project. So now I'm going to log out now. So what you can also do is if the program, if the controller stops working for some reason, you can also copy this project onto a new controller and uh, replace it. So how to do that? Um, open up your Windows Explorer, so just your file explorer, and type in here uh, FTP colon forward slash forward slash 192.168.1.50. And what this is doing is it's logging into the controller via FTP and the username, just admin wago. So after you create the boot project, then there's certain files that are created on the PLC. So we go into the PLC folder here. And what you can do here is you can copy this, all these files, paste them onto a local directory, and when you FTP into the new controller, just paste these files in. Um, one thing to note is that when you do replace the controller with a new one, you need to um, also set the IP address to the new controller to be the same. Um, just in case there is communication with um, master and slaves. What you also can do is you can make use of the SD card um, in the 750-880. So to use it, just go to open up your internet browser, type in the IP address of the controller. Alright, so we can use this uh, web-based management for a few things. Um, you'll see here there is a big list of um, options here. If you don't have all these options, you may need to update the firmware. The firmware version uh, for my 75880 is firmware version 8. Um, so either send a request to IRO support or to myself and I'll give you the latest firmware for that controller. So a f just a few different ways we can use the SD card. Um, first scenario, um, we want to load a program to the SD card then we want to go to site on a different 750-880, we want to plug the SD card in and um, get the controller to boot from that. So for th that example, um, we use this PLC tab. Uh, login is the same, admin wago. And we want to use this section here. We check SD card slot, like this. Just click submit. So now when we load the program, for instance this program here, and we log in. Um, what this actually does is it writes the program to the SD card instead of the internal bus. It didn't that time. What you actually can do is you can just 
uh, clean all, uh, rebuild all, and then log in. And when I do that, I can see that the SD card flash. So I know that it's writing to the SD card. So now we know that the program is on the SD card. Um, and now we can take out that um, SD card, we can give it to someone, they can put it into their computer, access the PLC files, and then they can copy the files to the controller.